this morning and also in the beginning we have a little bit discussed about the appearance of Nagarjun and his philosophy after 400 years of Buddha's passing away. It may not be a perfectly acknowledged by historian people, but uh, even today the history do not consider Nagarjun later than 100 AD, and some of them already taken it 100 BC whatever it may be, we do not know exact dates of the uh, composition of Madhimik Moon Karika. Madhimik Moon Karika is uh, the basic test on which the entire Madhimik philosophy and Madhimik tradition have been built up or developed later on. Madhmik Karika is a complete treatise, that means a complete Shastra. And uh, the other four, the uh, Shunyata Saptati, Vigar Vyarvatini, Yukti Shastika, and the Beduli Sutra. These four are Parkaranas. Parkaranas means uh, article on specific uh, topic. Then these five are considered to be dealing with only um, philosophical aspects. And uh, as pointing the logic and reasoning how to prove the uh, selflessness or the, the uh, uh, non-existence of one's own nature, the Subhauta. Then uh, Ratnawali. Ratnawali is a kind of a long letter written to one of his friends a king of at that time in Vrindava, Shalewan. Nagarjun's dates are mostly discussed on the basis of the dates of the Shalewan dynasty, but unfortunately Shalewan dynasties are also a number of uh, kings which uh, name as Shalewan. That's why it's become more difficult to uh, pinpointly decide the Nagarjun's date. After writing the uh, Madhimik Munkarika, Umansawa Shirap, a new chapter, a new um, a kind of uh, period was opened in the Mahayana Buddhism uh, a new thing, which is uh, Madhimik philosophy, that come to light. Nagarjun also wrote uh, many other treatises, which I'm not going to uh, referring here, because this is not very related to uh, Madhimik philosophy. And uh, the debate whether Nagarjun lived for 600 years or lived a normal life, maybe 80, 90, 100 years, this is also debatable. And uh, the modern historians always are uh, trying to uh, argue that there were three different Nagarjunas. The first Nagarjuna is the author of the Madhvi Karika, 
and uh, the uh, second Nagarjuna is the uh, author of the uh, Ayurved uh, treatises such as uh, uh, Yukti Shatak. And uh, the third Nagarjun is uh, who wrote the Panch Karma, that means the Tantric treatises. But uh, all the early Indian authors who refer to Nagarjun write from the uh, Arya Dev. Arya Dev is a direct disciple of Nagarjun and uh, who lived with Nagarjun for a number of years and who also refers Nagarjun's entire work. Uh, he may not mention about the uh, Ayurved texts, but Nagarjun's, he wrote commentary on the Nagarjun's tantric texts and he wrote commentary on the Nagarjun's Madhimik texts. And right from then, all the ancient Indian Acharyas consider Nagarjun is one who wrote the Madhimik Karika and who also wrote the treatises on Vajrayan or Tanta. So there's not two Nagarjun, there's only one Nagarjun. After Nagarjun, then the first commentator on Nagarjun's treatise was uh, Acharya Aryadev, as I mentioned, that is disciple and lived in a uh, Shri Parvat uh, in um, South India near Shirdana Katak. Um, now it's called uh, uh, something else uh, in the mountain. But uh, Shri Parvat and Shirdana Katak are still uh, uh, identifiable. These days, the new knee is Amaravati, where His Holiness has uh, uh, performed the Kalchakar initiation a few years back. There was a great stupa uh, of uh, Kala Chakra and which is destroyed. Now the portion of this Kala Chakra stupa have been brought to a uh, inland and they are uh, available some of the museums in inland and there are many uh, part of that, uh, that stupa is uh, uh, kept in the archaeological uh, museum of Chennai, we call Madras, previously now it's called Chennai. So there are so many historical evidences of Nagarjuna's living uh, in Shri Parvat. But now the Shri Parvat is been uh, submerged into the Nagarjuna Sagar. There's a dam was built up and the place where Nagarjun lived were now submerged. But in Jawaharlal Nehru, during the uh, time of construction, he took pains that all the uh, archaeological things, small stoop and uh, the other things, were being uh, shifted on a hilltop. They are still uh, available. Anyhow, these are not relevant. Then in the, uh, in the uh, process of development of uh, um, Madhimic philosophy, we find references of the eight great commentaries on Madhimic Munkarika. Out of eight great commentaries written by Indian scholars, I think within uh, 200 years or 250 years of period after Nagarjun, only three are translated into Tibetan language. The rest are, we only find some references, but they are not translated into a Tibetan language. The translation available in Tibetan language is the first is uh, Akotobai, commentary of Akotobai, in Tibetan language called Kalenjime. And uh, we do not know who is the author. Some people said this is an auto commentary, and uh, this is not. It is not auto commentary, uh, it's uh, very clear. Uh, but uh, 
not very later, but uh, Buddha Palit, Baba Vivek, Chandra Kirti, none of these other three great commentators did not give reference to the Akutubai. So it may not be considered very important at that time. The other um, available uh, commentary is the uh, Buddha Palit's commentary. Buddha Palit, uh, we do not know whether a direct disciple of uh, Nagarjun or even that disciple of Arya Dev or someone later. There's not much clear reference. Buddha Palit's uh, commentary is uh, considered one of the uh, very um, good and precise commentary. Most of the uh, Tibetan scholars, Sakya Pandit and um, Tungapa and uh, uh, Karmapurvi Durji and Ranjun Durji and um, all other uh, uh, scholars such as Lomjin Ranjamba, whosoever have uh, um, commented on uh, Madhimiki Mulkarika, the Buddha Palita's commentary has been uh, considered to be very authentic and uh, important. Then after the uh, written of Buddha Palita, the commentary of the Madhimiki Mulkarika, then uh, the very famous scholar, Baba Vivek, Prabhu Ledenjik, Baba Vivek was a, a very forceful and a kind of aggressive writer. And he wrote a, a very long commentary on uh, um, Madhimik Molkarika. And uh, that commentary is uh, known as uh, um, Pragyana Pardib. Shirabdumi, Prajana Pradib. The Prajana Pradib commentary is after the uh, um, Buddha Palit's commentary, and he uh, extensively uh, dismantled the uh, uh, position taken by Buddha Palit in his commentary. Buddha Palit is the name of the uh, author and also the name of the Book. The book uh, written by Buddha Palit is known as uh, uh, Buddha Palit Tika, the commentary of Buddha Palit. So, which was uh, repudiated quite forcefully by uh, Acharya Baba Vivek in his uh, Prajana Pradip. Prajana Pradip uh, is translated into Tibetan. So, Tibetans has uh, the direct commentary on the Madhimik Mulkarika, uh, first um, uh, Buddha Palit's commentary, and the second um, um, Baba Vik's commentary, and third uh, Chandrakit's commentary, Persona Pada. So this commentary, three commentary on uh, Madhimik Mulkarika is available in Tibet. Then uh, I mentioned about uh, Arya Deva. Arya Deva written few uh, articles, Parkaranas, but his uh, extensive commentary, it is not a commentary on uh, uh, verse by verse, but it's a commentary to uh, giving a totality of the uh, uh, Madhimik position that is uh, uh, Chatur Shatak, 400 verses uh, written by Ardev. That is also among the commentaries, not directly commenting uh, word by word, but it is a, a kind of um, commenting the whole Madhimik treatises. So that is uh, of course, translated into Tibet and a very um, 
largely studied by the Tibetan scholars. So Nagarjun and Arya Dev, these two are considered to be the common figure, parental figure, because uh, up to these two, there's no division in the uh, uh, Madhimik school. Then the commentary of Buddha Palit, which was reputed by uh, Baba Vivek, and which again reputed by uh, Chandrakirti. Then uh, the Madhimik school are divided into Prasangik school and uh, uh, Swatran Swatantrik uh, Madhimik school, not the Swatantrik Swatantrik uh, Madhimik school. So then the two different traditions are being, uh, uh, came into being. Apart from this, we have in Tibetan language, Nagarjun's auto-commentary on three uh, articles. One is the uh, Shunyata Satati, the other is the uh, Bigger Via Vartani, and the third is the Vidula Sutra. On these three basic treatises, Nagarjun wrote auto-commentary. And uh, on the uh, Yuti Shatak, Chandrakiti gave a commentary. Um, so these are the uh, commentaries on the Madhimik uh, Mool Karika and other related Madhimik Karikas. In Chinese language, there is a huge voluminous uh, uh, treatise which is called Madhimik Shastra. And uh, Chinese people believe that, no, Chinese translators believe that this is uh, written by Nagarjun. But this does not have neither in Sanskrit origin or uh, the Tibetan translation. So we infer this may not be a, a direct writing of Nagarjun. Because otherwise, Arya Dev, Buddha Palit, Baba Vivek, uh, Chandra Kirti, and many other scholars who have commented into Nagarjun's work should have given some reference about the existence of uh, such a uh, huge voluminous uh, treatise. But there's no reference anywhere. But in Chinese language, it um, do exist. And I don't know what kind of uh, contents in there, but it belongs to a Madhimiki school. It appears to that Buddha Palit have written, apart from the uh, commentary on Madhimik Munkarika, he also composed many other uh, treatises, but unfortunately, only his commentary on uh, Madhimik Munkarika is translated into Tibet. No other his work is uh, available in Tibetan translation, nor in Sanskrit original these days we are not able to find. As uh, Aryadev wrote the Chaturshatak quite independent of uh, the uh, Nagarjun's work, commenting on Nagarjun's work, but it is a, com a bit independent. Similarly, the Baba Vivek wrote uh, two great uh, famous treatises. One is uh, a root test, Madhimik Hirde, and uh, the auto commentary by himself, auto commentary on Madhimik Hirde, that's called Tarak Jual. Tarak Jual is uh, a big volume in Tanjur, uh, very extensive treatise, and in which he uh, uh, wrote uh, dialogues with uh, most of the non-Buddhist philosophical traditions exist by that time, and also the Buddhist traditions, Vibhashik, Sutantik, and a uh, little bit of uh, uh, Bhijanabad also by that time. So he discussing that. So Tarak Jawal is very famous. 
Unfortunately, we are not able to uh, retrace the uh, Sanskrit origin. Tibet translation is uh, very much available. The Sanskrit translation, which brought from Sakya Monastery, Shalu Monastery, by Mahapandi Raul Sankirtan and kept in Patna, and later on it was divided by number of scholars, and now uh, the test is lost. No one is uh, able to publish. Then the uh, commentary of uh, Baba Vivek on Madhimik Mulkarika, as I mentioned, the Parjan Pardeep. Parjan Pardeep has uh, again uh, a larger commentary, not directly to the Madhimik Mulkarika, commentary on commentary of Madhimik Mulkarika, which was written by uh, uh, Lokateshwar uh, Bharat, some Acharya Lokateshwar Bharat. He wrote a big voluminous uh, um, commentary on the Parjan Pradeep. These are the uh, early treatises. Then, of course, uh, Chandrakirti, Chandra Kirti wrote, um, apart from the commentary on Madhimik Mulkarika, Pasanna Pada, he also wrote his own independent uh, treatise, uh, Madhimik Avatar, Omalanjukpa. Madhimik Avatar is a very popular um, treatise. All the Tibetan traditions, the four or five or six, whatever we may, you may call, count, all the Tibetan different uh, schools do a study, and it, every set has their own commentary on Madhimik Avatar. Because he, he wrote it in a very uh, poetic uh, language, very beautiful and very easy to uh, memorize. So when we are small, to memorize Madhimik Avatar is an easy job, and to memorize Abhisama Anka is so difficult job. <laughs> and uh, further, the memorizing of uh, Abhidhamma Kosh and uh, Parmana Bhartik, so, so difficult. But uh, Madhimika Avatar is so uh, beautiful verses, and uh, by reading once or twice, you can memorize the things. And then he wrote auto commentary on Madhimika Avatar. And he also wrote a commentary on uh, Yuti Shastra, I, I, I have mentioned. So these are the early development of Madhimiki school in uh, India. And uh, all Tibetan traditions, when they are commentating anything on Buddhist uh, philosophical schools, they always refer to the original Indian sources. And uh, there are sometimes um, misconception that Tibetan people might have uh, something uh, alteration or addition on these treatises. Tibetans do have their own contribution in different fields, but when commentating on philosophical treatises, they are very faithful and very sincere to refer. Of course, they can be different of opinion when commentating, otherwise, uh, no one tries to make their own uh, uh, position. They always refer back to uh, Indian positions. Then, fourth generation, uh, Nagarjun and uh, Aradevi, first generation, uh, the um, Buddha Palit, second generation. Baba Vivek, maybe third generation. Chandrakirti, fourth generation. Then thereafter, in the fifth generation, uh, Jan Garv have written uh, uh, Madhimika uh, Satya Dwe and his auto commentary. Then later on, Acharya the great Acharya Shantarachit, who has established the Buddhism in Tibet, 
with great effort. And uh, so he wrote uh, Madhimika Alankar. And Madhimika Alankar is uh, in the school of uh, Baba Vivek, the Swatantik uh, uh, Madhimika school. Madhimika Alankar is one treatise, but we consider it's, uh, one is a root and the other is a commentary. It's not exactly like that. Uh, it's written in the mixture of uh, prose and poetry both, Pad and Gad. So the Pad uh, is considered to be the root test and the uh, uh, God is uh, considered to be commentary test. That may not be, it may be written at one time. But this is a very important uh, uh, treatise. Then thereafter, um, one Acharya Dharma Mitter have written a commentary on uh, Shanti Rashi's uh, Madhmik Alankar. And uh, similarly, written by Acharya Kamanishil, the disciple of, uh, chief disciple of the uh, Shanti Rachit, uh, Madhmik Prakash. This is a kind of commentary on the Madhmik uh, Alankar. Baba Vivek was the uh, propounder of the uh, Swatantik uh, Madhmika, and then Acharya Shantidev, Acharya Dharma Mitra, and Acharya Kamashil. These three are considered to be the three pillars for uh, uh, Swatantik Madhmiki school. We call it Rangju Sharson. I don't know what refers to Shar. Then later on, after these uh, Acharyas, of course, Acharya Shanti Dev have written um, uh, Bodhisattva Acharya in that uh, the ninth chapter is exclusively dealing with the Madhmik philosophy. Then Arya Shur and uh, Arya Nag Bodhi, Acharya Nag Bodhi, Acharya Mukti Sen, Acharya Haribhadra, other Acharya Bodhijan, and uh, much later Acharya, um, the great scholar Abhyankar, uh, Abhyankar, Acharya Abhyankar, who have written very extensively on uh, Pajamparamita and also on uh, Tantras. So these are some notable uh, Acharyas uh, up to uh, 10th, 9th, 10th, 11th century. Uh, I think uh, up to late 10th century, Abhyankar Gupta and all this may be at that period. So then thereafter, Buddhism disappeared from India until that Madhmik. Uh, uh, philosophical school was uh, very much uh, uh, flourished in Nalanda, Bikramshila, Takshishil, Udandapuri, and uh, all the rest of the uh, learning centers. They are mostly the uh, great Acharyas are belonging to a uh, uh, Madhmik uh, school. So this is a uh, historic part. And uh, how much texts are available from India to Tibet that I uh, tried to uh, mention to you. And uh, tomorrow, then we will uh, go into the uh, uh, concepts and uh, positions in the philosophy. So, after s having said that, now we shall come to the 
questions there are number of questions i don't know whether i able to respond we will try yes please so the first question is about the ultimate truth of beings and phenomena it says do beings and phenomena share the same ultimate truth buddha nature rigpa or dhammakaya the answer would be yes and no <laughs> ultimate truth is of course pervasive to all existing things which includes being and the phenomenon chuda kansa both are included within the ultimate truth uh, the four different philosophical schools has different positions what is ultimate truth and what is relative truth so therefore i said no because uh, all position cannot say the being and the phenomenon share the sin ultimate truth for example um in a vivashika concept the ultimate truth uh, goes only with the com com compounded things so beans yes there are ultimate truth in on the beans but on the phenomenon some of the phenomenon do have ultimate truth the other phenomenon uh, which are in the category of uh, uncompounded they does not have any ultimate truth and ultimate truth and uh, relative truth in their sense are entirely different which is not pervasive to everything in the madhyamik view of course the uh, conventional existence of being and the conventional existence of um uh phenomenon both are in the realm of relative truth and uh, the selflessness or the shunyata of being and the shunyata of phenomenon both are in the realms of the ultimate truth and there both shares the ultimate truth but the buddha nature rigpa or dharma kaya non buddhist concept more a non buddhist concept maybe a um, western religion and philosophic traditions or indian um barmanical traditions when they talk about uh, creation of the world and creation of the um, individuals then they have to uh, uh, accept some beginning so since we do not uh, talk about the creation or creator so everything is uh, on interdependently arising and uh, among the interdependent arising there are certain category which does have an beginning and which also have an end but only the mind the clarity or the consciousness that does not have a, a beginning so therefore this is uh, just a speculation or hypothesis that there is the beginning of the existence and uh, 
who does not have accumulated any karma and uh, these are not uh, um, talked about in a Buddhist canon and uh, it may not be accepted by uh, any Buddhist school. Of course, there are two schools with, who says that there is a cessation of mind when you liberate it. You have uh, uh, eradicated all kind of defaultments, then you also give up the body, then there is a cessation. Otherwise, uh, uh, no one will uh, talk about the uh, beginning of uh, uh, existence. Yes? Next. Contemporary scientists say that matter does not exist as such, and that it is just frozen energy. What is the Buddhist view on this? Clearly, there is my material body and the material world that the mind can control or alter. Is mind separate from matter, or is matter just some sort of misperception of mind's own energy, its own luminosity? I do not know what the contemporary scientists are saying, the frozen of energy. Uh, I have no um, knowledge about it. So therefore, I cannot uh, appropriately respond uh, to this question because uh, one portion of question is uh, I'm ignorant of. Um, but the contemporary science people says many things and they also changing their position over and over again. They say there is a room for infinite uh, correction. So today what we consider as a thesis, as a tomorrow it may become hypothesis and some, something else may come up. So this is uh, the uh, goodness or badness with the uh, contemporary science. Nevertheless, um, these expressions, energy and the frozen and all this, um, um, mostly from the Buddhist viewpoint, may be termed as conceptually imposition or inputted and which may not be uh, um, tangible and uh, verifiable in the ground of reality. The Vigyanbad's position, which we uh, try to talk uh, quite at length yesterday and this morning, they very forcefully argue no existence of a subsidence of the matter outside the mind. That position, again I don't know, is uh, compatible with the uh, idea of uh, frozen energy. 
that we shall have to ask uh, um, with the contemporary science people. The froze, frozen energy is referring to the uh, substantive construction of the matter uh, which does not uh, differentiate it from the uh, substantive position of the uh, mind, then it may be near or perhaps compatible with the position of Vijnanabad. Otherwise, uh, uh, it may be speaking entirely something different. Even the Vijnanabads will not say the matter is uh, just uh, misperception, nor it would say the matter is uh, mind's own energy, because energy again comes within the realm of uh, some uh, duality, some substantive existence. This may be usable luminosity um, for the uh, Vijnanabhas. Vijnanabhas always says that the entire matter is uh, the result of the cause of the mind. And uh, the cause of the mind creates the matter with same substance of the mind. There is no different substance. So that's why the mind and matter are remain as uh, one J, one uh, darb sata, one um, tangible or material thing. So there is no different darb sata to both. So in that case, e, the expression luminosity is uh, as a, a metaphoric word saying that the mind in its, uh, uh, in its uh, enlargement or in its uh, um, projection, it includes matter, then that may be a uh, bit of similarity with the Vijnanabad position. But Vijnanabad's position will not be, uh, of course, accepted by Madhimikas, and it's also the Vijnanabad position is uh, very difficult to uh, establish while uh, dialoguing with the uh, contemporary science people. The contemporary science people are more compatible, more comfortable to uh, dialogue with the position of the Prasangika Madhimikas and uh, sometimes uh, the uh, the Bajrayan, the, the tantric position, they are more um, easily understandable. So I'm sorry I cannot uh, um, um, respond to this uh, question sufficiently or um, um, appropriately satisfactorily, but what uh, confusion comes to my mind, which I explained, and I think it will uh, more uh, confusion you may carry. So,
Let us go to the next. The next question is about the late exposition of the Mahayana teachings. What was the change in conditions and environment that facilitated the revelation of the Mahayana teachings 400 years after the Buddha's passing away? I don't know. It was uh, 400 years after Buddha's passing away, but uh, twenty-one, uh, 2,100 years before we are. So it's very uh, early time. We can only speculate and uh, I do not have any uh, historical account of this. Nagarjan is considered to be manifestation of Manjushri, Bodhisattva Manjushri. And Bodhisattva Manjushri was very much present in Buddha's uh, congregation when uh, Buddha gave teaching of Paramita and so forth. All the five great Bodhisattvas always participating. Then there might be, there must be some solid reason after Buddha's Parinirvan, those Buddhisattvas did not uh, make revelation or uh, exposition to the public all the Mahayana Sutras and uh, their compilation of sutras and tantras have not been done in, uh, in the common places as the others have been done in Rajgiri or Pataliputra and so on and so forth. Buddha had said when uh, he was asked to uh, encounter with the six non-Buddhist uh, teachers in a, um, in Rajgiri and uh, other places, but I always postponing them. And when he postponing the encounter, all Buddhist kings and Buddhist followers asking Buddha, why you are uh, finding a way to escape? Why you are not uh, facing the date to uh, make argument with the non-Buddhist teachers? And Buddha's answer always used to be, I alone know the appropriate time. No one else knows the appropriate time. I alone knows the appropriate time. So it is a, a kind of a, a beyond our comprehension why Buddha postponing for several days and finally he landed at uh, Sharavasti and by that time more than uh, six or seven kings were already followed him to see the debate. And then he started the encounter. So it is stuck to me why he says, I alone knows the time. 
And similarly, he was asked to ordain the bhikkhunis. Then he was postponing. And he says, I know the time. And finally, the ordination took place. So what I am saying that Bodhisattva Manjushri was very much present, even the tenth of uh, Buddha's teaching of Mahaparinya, uh, Buddha's teaching of Paramita Sutras. Then at that moment, very moment, when after the Buddha's teaching, the uh, Manjushri could have compelled them and make public. It didn't. But Buddha had uh, given the prophecy that Nagarjun will be born after 400 years and uh, he will bring the Mayan teachings into the light. And only Buddha knows why after 400 years. Um, so this is very difficult to uh, imagine or speculate. This may be a work of uh, pure academic uh, historian having no um, faith in any dharma or religious tradition uh, look from the viewpoint of uh, ordinary modern uh, events or happenings to occur They may say that after 400 years the Buddhism was more established and uh, philosophical tenets were also much enlarged or developed. As I briefly mentioned there before or there before, that during Buddha's lifetime, the expression such as uh, Vivashikas and Suthantikas might not have existed. All are the Sangha, the Sharavak Sangha, the Bhikkhu Sangha, the Bhikkhuni Sangha, and uh, they dwell together and uh, they discuss the Buddha's teachings in a different way and later on due to the needs of uh, time due to the needs of the uh, human inquisitive mind concepts uh, might have uh, aiding and then particularly after Buddha's Parinivan uh, even after the uh, first Sangeet the first congregation then uh, the Bhikkhu Sangh very much enlarged and uh, Buddha's teachings were uh, not only recited um, by the uh, memorized people but they are beginning to uh, written down on uh, clothes or people or uh, uh, tamapatras so the beginning of recording and beginning of writing, which, which was started even Buddha's lifetime, but largely after uh, first Sangeet, then a more um, philosophical tenets might be coming in or finding out the Buddha's teachings. So then after 400 years, it may be more acceptable social and conditions of the Sangha to bring uh, the uh, Mayana Sutras. This is uh, only a speculation. We cannot say definitively. If Nagarjun alive today, we might have asked him, why you come uh, after 400 years? Why don't you come today? That may be more uh, uh, good for the contemporary world. So these are in the realm of uh, 
uh, no verifiable things, so I cannot uh, um, make a imaginary speculation, so better to leave. Okay, next. Rinpoche, we have been hearing a lot about the 12 links of interdependent origination in recent days and how if we address our fundamental ignorance of who we really are, the cycle of suffering can be broken. To actually realize this, though, seems to be a lengthy process. From your experience in your work, could Rinpoche please advise us on how we could, in the meantime, avoid solidifying our experience into anger and hatred when others hurt or abuse us or people we care about, even when there have been clear attempts at dialogue. What is the middle way in such situations? To run away. <laughs> As we run away from the Chinese force, it's better to run away. For that matter, all the uh, extensive tradition of uh, mind training, the Lu Jun, the teacher, are developed. Of course, until the eradication of the first link, ignorance, you cannot eradicate all negative emotions, but you can very substantially reduce the negative emotions and uh, I do not say suppress. Suppress is not a remedy but reduce and avoid or see at the face of the negative emotions. Anger hatredness, aversion, all these are come out of strong disliking and whenever a feeling of disliking arising in the mind, the most important is to see it, to realize it, it is arising. So that's why the Buddha teach the practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness uh, is used for two different terms, Temba and Shijin. I heard people are using uh, both of these terms for mindfulness. Do you have different uh, expression? Shijin is awareness and uh, Temba is mindfulness. Okay. In English language itself, there are some distinction between these two, awareness and uh, mindfulness. Little distinction. Um, we have to keep ourselves accustomed to have a, a kind of a awareness to watch the moments of mind to watch the, uh, um, the arising of different emotions. So there are different 
meditation masters has different kind of method. Someone are teaching uh, mindfulness in working, mindfulness in eating, mindfulness in uh, talking, and mindfulness in uh, answering to the telephone, so on and so forth. What they talk about is, while doing all this, can you keep a watch consistently to your mind? Because, uh, for example, you are talking on telephone, the other counterpart with whom you are talking is uh, not physically visible before you. Uh, in spite of that, the words you are hearing from the telephone can hurt you. If there is not a watchdog of the process of listening in your mind, you will realize that you are hurt and you have uh, reacted sharply and uh, put down the telephone huh, with angrily, then thereafter you realize, oh, I re reacted overly. So that's why you do not have the awareness and the mindfulness at that moment of time. If you have awareness and mindfulness at that moment of time, you may not uh, completely avoid a rise of anger but you can definitely control over it. And you can definitely uh, reduce it. Or you can avoid your reaction or showing it in a, a physical expression or a vocal expression. So therefore, the only middle way in such situation would be watch your own mind and guard your own mind. One of the Katamba Gishi, Gishi Langrathamba, used to say, I have nothing to do but to watch my mind all the day. This is only, uh, this is only my job. <coughs> I carry a sharp weapon of mindfulness and stand on the door of my mind. And whenever a negative uh, emotion comes, I immediately, before it enters into the door, I stop it on the door. So he used to say, this is uh, something jokingly, but it's a good thing. And uh, he used to keep a, a black chalk and white chalk in his uh, cape. He's living in a cape. And he's just watching his own mind. And as soon as uh, a negative emotion comes, he put one line by black chalk on the wall of the uh, um, cape. And some positive emotion comes, then he put a white line and in the evening, before he went to the bed, and he count them, then if the black lines are more and white lines are less, so he take his uh, right hand by left hand and scold him. <laughs> you, <laughs> you bloody fool, you uh, stupid, you have done this and you have done that. You are not a good meditator, you are not a practitioner, so on and so forth. If white lines are more, then he take his uh, left hand by right hand. Good, good, you are Shabash. Okay, you keep up and uh, do better tomorrow. It is a, a metaphor, it's a kind of model. So we have to uh, be aware all the time. My late friend, uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti used to say, unconditional awareness and observation. So has it difficult to understand what is unconditional awareness or observation? But uh, 
we indulge into very strong negative emotions when there is no observation and no mindfulness. The uh, some pragyana and smirt, anusmirt and some pragyana. This is to some pragyana is the um, uh, is the watchman who points. Yes, there is coming. And the smirt or anusmirt is the person who fights with that. Yes, I will not surrender to this negative emotion. So this kind of immediate um, action, of course, it's difficult to come. We have to practice. There's no shortcut. Uh, there's no capsule which can be uh, swallowed and uh, you are free from all kind of uh, negative emotions. We have to uh, practice. So here, middle way, Sometimes, in such circumstances, middle, middle way is uh, to pause, to postpone, and to think and to watch. These are the uh, ready instrument to encounter such negative emotions arising and such situation. So I find the uh, compilation of uh, various uh, Lujum texts and uh, printed in a small booklet. And uh, you should keep in the pocket like uh, mouse literature by the communist Chinese. They always keep it here, red book, and uh, something comes immediately, take out and read it. So. You read this Lujung um, advices in the morning, and when situation comes, perhaps you can take it and I can read and uh, to control yourself. Oh, we are not uh, through. Yes, okay. Next. So there are some questions about um, a chitta matter. One is about the terminology. Could Rimati explain again what are the subtle differences between the different terms describing existence? And there's a list. Existent from its own side or objective existence. Existent by its own nature or characteristics. Truly established or truly existent established as a self, inherently existent, or substantially existent? These are very commonly used by various schools of thought, and each one of the uh, different schools do have a different interpretation, different connotation to a uh, these different terminologies. So therefore, I uh, mentioned yesterday that before we are entering into uh, the Madhimik position, we shall have to be accustomed with these uh, uh, terms so that when it actually comes in usage, then uh, we may not be uh, overly confused. So that's why we try to uh, talk these things. Objective existence or existent from its own side is we are using for this Sanskrit term swata satta or swata siddh swa means self 
and the sata means existence. And uh, this term is uh, translated into a Tibetan language, Rangwene Tupa. That means it exists from its own side or it exists uh, objectively, whatever it may be. The Prasangika Madhimika denies nothing is exist from its own side. And other than the Prasangika school, all the rest of the school says this is synonym with existence. Something that exists, it shall have to be exist from its own side. If it does not exist from its own side, then that means there is no existence. And they um, consider if something is not exist from its own side, you cannot impose the existence. And in other words, there is existence, then it should be able to find out when you analyze it. Tadun Sina Niva. It is not enough to designate but the designated thing should be uh, verifiable when you search it. So therefore, up to the Prasangika Madhimika, they search who I am, who is the person, and uh, then there should be some object on which the person can be uh, pinpointed, this is the person. So therefore somebody says the combination of five aggregates to the person and uh, the, pra the uh, Sodantik Madhmika says the uh, Manu began, the consciousness of the mind is the person. They call it Senshi Yich Namshi. And uh, the um, a school of uh, Bijanabad, who, who conceived the uh, uh, eight Bijanas, they say the Ale Bijana, the uh, uh, basis of all Bijana is the person. And uh, they identify such a thing. So that's why they, they exist from its own. Then Prasangiki school says, if something is verifiable in the uh, ultimate searching of analyzation, then that is uh, um, that is the uh, the opposite thing of the reality. So therefore, you shall have to negate. So nothing is uh, verifiable when analytical research in the sense of ultimate reality. So therefore nothing exists from its own side, but is, it is just uh, on uh, interdependently, circumstantially designated by name and uh, by mind or by thought and that designated, only the designated thing should be suffice as existence. So similarly, the essence by its own characteristic, these two are not much different. These two are almost uh, uh, synonym, but uh, it is, uh, uh, differently used because the rang senj tuba swata lachana siddhi for the began bodies uh, the um, um, 
can settle imposed things do not exist by its own, by its own characteristic. But uh, the Patantra do exist by its own characteristic. So for them, this expression differentiates some of the natures of the uh, uh, three different uh, uh, categories. Truly established existence is negated by the entire Madhimik school. None of the Madhimik school do not accept anything is uh, truly existent or truly established. That is uh, uh, Satya, Satya Siddhi or Satya Sata. But the Vigyanva says the uh, Patantra, uh, the, the dependent phenomenon and uh, the well-established phenomenon do exist in its true nature, truly established. And uh, only the uh, um, conceptual constructed things do not uh, for the began body, the second one, by its own characteristic and truly established, are almost synonym. Inherently existence is also uh, very near to uh, um, objective existence and also characteristic existence by its own nature or characteristics. These three these three different expressions are synonym in the view of Prasangika Madhimika. But uh, these are not exactly synonym in uh, lower schools, Vijnanabad and uh, the other schools. So I think we shall have to repeat it tomorrow. Today the watch says this is enough. <laughs> or the wife says you are not uh, capable of explaining. So let, uh, let us stop here. Thank you. <laughs>